Okay, so this is going to be a walkthrough of the classic GitHub desktop. Um, just going to walk through and show the application since you can't download it anymore on a new machine to play with it yourself. So this is what uh, it looks like. Um, so I am in this repo here, whatever it is, I'm going to hit compare to the main branch so I can see that I'm on the main branch that's listed here. That's what I'm on. I can see my previous commits. Um, I'm currently at this front level here with the circle with the lines through it. Um, and I can click on uh, any files in this area here to see the changes. Um, you'll note that uh, it's showing that we've removed, we removed this line 11 and we replaced it with this other line 11 and it also specifically highlighted the change. Um, main.alert uh, got turned into shared.alert and passing in the string of main. So I don't know what that's about, but that's the change. We can see that there. Um, yeah, and I can switch between these files. I can scroll around in them. And um, as you see, I can click here to commit just the removal of this line or click here and commit both of them. Um, or I can click this little thin bar right here, this little thin gray bar between the line numbers and here. And um, as I'm hovering, you'll see what gets selected. So if I hover over, oh, it's also the plus and the minus too. do it. I never noticed that. Uh, but yeah, if I click uh, on that, then it will select those things. And if everything is selected, then the file has a check mark and I can uncheck it. All right. Um, you can see up here the, uh, the old code that's being removed was lines 9 through 26. And then the new code is on line 9, 10, 11, go on from there. So the line numbers on both sides, that's how that's working. And then whatever the other changes are. Um, let's go to a different repo and look at um, branch comparison. So um, this is an old app. It predates people using anything other than master as the default branch. So it just assumes that is the default. Um, there is a command you can run to see what the default branch is, but they didn't do that apparently. So every time in this old app, I have to tell it to compare the current branch, in this case, the one that says view three, compare that against main, and then I can see the base branch and the branch I'm on uh, and the comparison and where they split off from each other. I can see that uh, at some point we merged something into this main branch, so it's got the little merge symbol there. Um, these little dots are commits, so if I click on them, it switches over to the history pane automatically and shows me that specific commit, which has 136 files. So we're gonna skip past that one. Uh, this one has four, and I can expand it open and see the changes here um, in, uh, in, in this commit and see what happened with it. Uh, it also has uh, my name uh, of whoever did the commit, uh, the commit number, the commit ID, the hash, or whatever that thing is, uh, a revert button. I've never clicked this. I don't know if this is useful at all. Uh, I think it's probably a bad idea for stuff that is already pushed up, but I don't know. Um, let's find out what happens. I'm going to click on, let's see, this one here. Click revert. Oh, it just made a, a, oh, okay, cool. Well, that's neat. That's probably useful, actually. Um, yeah, so that just made a new commit, undoing the previous one. and undid it. So I'm assuming if I had done this one, it would have reverted everything back to this point and had a new commit that undid everything so that the only thing would be these first 136 and everything else would have been undone. That's cool. Um, as you can see, uh, dots for uh, commits. Um, when things are selected, they turn blue. When I hover, they get a little bit brighter. Um, these ones turn blue and get a little bit bigger. On hover, it also shows the name of the commit, which is useful and uh, when the commit occurred and who did it. Um, but yeah, the name is the important thing there. Um, and then the, the donuts, not the dot, the donut is a commit that has been created and uh, you know committed locally, but we haven't pushed it up yet. So if I click sync, then it would push that up and revert that change, but I don't wanna do that. So um, I'm gonna come up here to this little gear icon and hit undo most recent commit. I don't know why they hid that up there. It should be a button right here. So I'm going to hit undo most recent commit. 
and uh, I can see that reverted changes that were here. I can um, click on these and uh, right click and discard changes for this particular file. Uh, I can also open the file, open the containing folder of that file. I can ignore the file, which will add uh, to the dot git ignore folder or file uh, here, dot git ignore. It'll add it into here. I'll go ahead and do that real quick just so you can see. Uh, ignore file, come back over here and added it to this. So it ignored it, but it also added the git ignore here. I will discard those changes. They go away. Um, and you can also ignore all of that specific file type. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, discard the changes on this one. These are the things we were reverting. Um, you can also, where it says three changes, it's listing all the files, I can right click on that and hit discard all, and that clears everything out. So that's pretty nice. Um, there's a lot of actions where it will pre-fill the message and description. So in this case, uh, it showed me the, um, the commit message when I had come over here and clicked revert. Uh, it shows me the commit message and then shows uh, the description, this reverts commit and then the commit hash. So it just generated that on its own when it created that commit. Um, it also does stuff like that whenever you are pulling in. If I hit update from main, view conflicts, this is a great demo. Uh, so you can see what happens when the, when you do that. So normally this would just get pulled down here. It would actually animate and like slide down to the spot and this whole area would shift over. These four dots here and this little line, the, the, the forking off of it would all slide back and there'd be room for this guy and it would animate into position. Uh, but I didn't do that this time. Instead, it is showing me uh, the merge conflicts. And if there were a bunch of files, all this commit right here is that got merged into the main branch. All it was was just this one file and these two lines. But if there were a whole bunch of files, then they would show up in here and we would see um, the icon next to them would tell us if it is added or removed or um, renamed or updated uh, or in conflict. So right now we see that it is in conflict. Um, and there's, you can't edit anything here. This is read only. Uh, you can see that it did uh, try to create the commit name here. So it's saying that it's merge remote tracking branch, blah, 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 main into view three. So merging this branch into that. And then it lists the conflicts down here like this in this weird uh, pound sign YAML comment format. I don't know what that's, why it does it that way, but it does with a whole bunch of, oh, that's just a tab. I thought it was a bunch of spaces. Okay, um, so then I can resolve these conflicts. So we'll go there real quick and do that. Let's go to um, the package.json. Okay, so there's the actual changes there. Now you'll note that it still has this um, conflict, right? And uh, I can check this box and commit and it will sort that out, or at least it should. Um, this is an old program, it's a little clunky, so it may not. Uh, but if I go into here, get branch, get status, I can see um, this information here of saying I'm on this branch. You have unmerged paths, fix conflicts and run git commit. Use git merge dash dash abort to abort the merge. So it's it's be getting prepared to make a merge commit, which is a specific type of commit, which is how we can tell and determine if it gets a dot or this merge icon. So it's getting prepared to make a commit of that specific type. So that's how the UI knows it is that type and to use the specific icon. Um, so it's preparing for that, and it's saying if I don't want to make it that type, I can abort it. Um, and then it's telling me all the stuff that's left to do, the unmerged paths, git add the file to mark them as resolved. So um, it knows that this file has a conflict that needs to be resolved. Um, and when I'm finished, I can hit git add and it will resolve the conflict. Um, but until it's been moved to staging or whatever, um, to, it's been added until then, 
it will have this conflict status associated to it. Even though I've removed all of the, the problems here, um, it isn't until git add is applied that it turns back into this little square with a dot to show that there are changes. The file has changed. Um, and then from here, I can hit the commit. It uh, then produces that and pulls that down in here. Um, and you saw that it was merged from that one above into here. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit, uh, well, sync should also sync it up. Um, right now, I may not have the latest stuff. Someone else may have pushed something to the main or view three branch, and I don't see that here. So that, that sync button would handle that. If I clicked on sync, um, it would uh, pull down the latest for both of these branches um, via fetch, I assume, I'm not sure. Uh, and then it would, once all of that settled out, it would then push the stuff up and uh, it would point out if there are any issues in that process where I can't push up because I need to um, deal with a merge conflict or something that was pulled down. Um, but yeah, assuming that works, I can do git push. You'll notice every time I leave the window, see how like I push up, it hasn't changed yet, but I click back into it, it then checks itself and realizes it's been pushed. So the circular version of the icon turned back into the normal icon uh, and pushed that up. Okay, um, so that's most of the stuff here. Um, and the drop down, I can see the list of all of the, uh, the branches that are available and uh, it lists when they were created and which one is selected currently. Uh, I can filter on them and type in V. I can see it filters down to view two and three. Um, I, can, uh, I can see this one hasn't been updated since September of 2018, uh, but I could switch to these branches, recent branches, and then it lists every other branch um, locally and on the remote. It combines all of them together. It puts the recent ones at the top and then anything that isn't in this list will be thrown down below it and you can filter on them. Um, every time you open this up, it's checking uh, locally and remote. So it has like a cached version that it shows immediately. So you can start typing and filtering on that and select the one that's in the local cache stuff. But then once it has all the information um, locally and it's once the git command to check the branches finishes, and the remote network call to check the remote branches finishes, uh, it will then combine all of this together and uh, uh, update, replace what was in here with the new thing. So the filter, whatever you're filtering on, it may be empty and then a moment later just populate with the actual value because um, it's a new branch that's only on, that was created remotely. Um, so every time that's how that works. Uh, there is a drop down up here where I can switch branches, which switches this bottom one. I've always thought it was weird that it was up here instead of there. But the reason for that is if I compare the branch to itself, um, it goes away. The bottom branch goes away. So this becomes the new base. And uh, I have no way to like compare against it to switch, switch the branch that I'm on to a different branch underneath it. Um, I feel like this can be solved better than how they've done that here. Um, there is this compare dropdown. It's a little clunky. I feel like this could be cleaned up and, and made a little bit cleaner. Um, there's this little tiny um, branch icon. So if I click on that, it pops open and I can create a new branch, whatever I want to call it. And I would be branching off of one of these other ones. So these, I can pick whatever I want my base to be and it will take the latest commit from there and that will be the the base that you're branching off of. Um, it would be the equivalent of uh, git checkout dash b uh, cool stuff from main. So I would create a new branch called main, a new branch called cool stuff that's branching off of main. So it's doing the same thing as that. That's what this UI is for here. Um, yeah, I think that's most of that. There's this little guy right here, which just toggles the visibility of the sidebar, shows and hides it. Um, when it's hidden, it shows up here next to these icons. When it's shown, it shows up in the panel itself. 
Um, over here in the sidebar, we can see the, the list of all the repos. There's a plus at the top. If I click on that, I can add a repo locally so I can browse to where I've cloned down a repo or where I've created a repo already um, locally and I haven't pushed up yet maybe, um, or I've just cloned something down but I haven't added it into this UI yet. So that lets me browse and navigate to where that folder would be. Um, create lets me create a new uh, full new project. So a uh, cool project. You'll see that as I'm typing, it's updating the URL or the file path for where it's going to be created at. Um, this is the GitHub desktop app. So uh, it creates a GitHub folder in my documents and uh, it assumes that everything will live there. So anytime I clone something down or create a new project, it wants to put them inside that GitHub folder, which is fine by me. Uh, I can browse and put it somewhere else though. And then when I'm creating a new project, uh, I can choose my Git ignore from the, the drop down here filter. And that's the same thing on the GitHub website. When you go to create a new repo, um, it'll ask, uh, do you want to pre-populate with a common Git ignore file? Uh, so yeah, that's what that does. And then I create, I would create that project locally. Um, I would still have to push that up, which I've literally never used this feature before. Um, I don't, don't know if this is at all useful whatsoever. Um, clone. So, uh, the clone would sh take my, uh, user login information. If I logged in with my GitHub account. Uh, in this application, then uh, it would check all of the repos. It would show my, over here, we have two panels. The first panel will have my username and then every GitHub organization that I'm a part of would be listed underneath it. And then I can click on my name or a specific GitHub organization. And the second panel would show all of the repos uh, under uh, my user account on GitHub or under that GitHub organization, all the repos associated to it. Uh, and then I could click on one of them and then click the button to um, clone, clone down. And it would automatically clone it down into that uh, GitHub folder in the documents um, with the name of whatever the repo is. It's just doing a git clone of it into the, the spot. Um, and that's what this little plus guy up here has in it. That's what, what it's hiding is these three sections. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, sidebar has a fancy fake scroll bar. Um, I can switch between different repos, as you saw. Uh, and then we have uh, this gear icon that says tools and options. And in here, it's uh, giving me the option to delete the current branch that I'm on, V3 branch. I'm gonna switch back to comparing the main so that I can delete the V3 branch. Um, or I can uh, uh, go into the repo settings, the settings for this particular repository. And in here, it's showing me the git ignore file and I can actually edit it here if I wanted to. I don't know why they have a very minimalistic text editor built in just for this file here. Um, the remote is the primary remote or origin is an address to a remote repository. This is where we will sync changes to and from. Find out more about remotes at git-scm.com. Go to the official Git website. Um, so this is the uh, remote for the repo, uh, the .git file where that lives on the remote server. Um, and I guess the, they let you change the remote from here rather than having to type in some weird command, which I'm sure there's some way of doing. Um, line endings, uh, line endings and attributes. The .git attributes file controls line endings normalization and helps Git decide which files are binary and which are text. Learn more about Git attributes on github.com. Uh, add the recommended Git attributes file. And uh, it produces this here has uh, the text equals auto instead of text equals LF or whatever, and all these other things. I'm gonna cancel on that. Uh, and we'll go back into the repo settings. And then there's git LFS for large file system or large files or whatever it is. Um, 
add the file types or paths, for example, zip, star.zip would be the pattern uh, that you want to associate with git lfs. This amends your repos, git attributes file, and associates large files with git lfs. Visit git lfs.github.com to learn more. So they have a, a separate system for git repos were designed for small text files. And if you have gigantic binaries and video files and images and stuff, uh, you, you have you know gigabytes of size for your repo instead of a, a tiny little text-based thing. Um, Git can really have a lot of, run into a lot of problems if you do that. So uh, they created Git LFS for that problem. I've never had it because Git LFS costs money. So I've never paid for it. So I've never created a repo with giant files in them. Um, cancel. Uh, open in Explorer will open up the repo um, files. I'll click it. Here they are. That's the Kong Darbo folder for the repo that I'm in, Kong Darbo. Um, open in git shell. Uh, so this just opens up uh, the, the repo location, in my case, in the command prompt. You can change that in the settings. We'll see that in a minute. Um, view on GitHub. I don't know why this doesn't work. Um, maybe it's because I'm not logged in with my GitHub account. I don't know. There's tutorial, I'm not gonna click on that. If you click on tutorial, it pops open a, um, I don't know, maybe I should, yeah, let's do it. Tutorial, so it just created a new repo in the sidebar called tutorial and it will walk us through how to use the app. So let's see. Welcome, let's walk through the basics of GitHub Flow. And this is a link, if I click on this, what does it do? Um, it takes me to docs.github.com slash en slash git dash started slash quick start slash github dash flow um, which is let's move this to the screen so you can see it uh following github flow make changes create a pull request address few comments merge so it's just explaining the basics of the git workflow using github cool uh, make a branch, make changes, open pull requests. Yep, got it. That's what the thing said. Uh, if you want to launch this tutorial at another time, go to the gear menu and select it. That's what we just did. Got it or learn more. Let's click on learn more. It takes you to that same page as this. Okay, got it. We should start by making a new branch. This will give us our own space to work in separate from what anyone else might be doing. And then there's a learn more, and that takes me to the same get up, get flow page. Okay, got it. Click the branch button above to create a new branch. Give it a nice descriptive name like tutorial branch. Learn more. Does that take me literally the same page? They always take me the same page. Uh, wowie zowie. And as I do that, it says branch will be created as wowie dash zowie because branches can't have spaces. Uh, so I'll hit create. Uh, these lines on the graph are comparing your new branch to the default branch, master. It shows the commits on your branch and the new commits on master since you branched. Got it. And learn more, which is, again, that same page. Keep opening a bunch of tabs at the same page. Got it. It's kind of boring right now because we haven't made any changes on your branch. Let's change that. Ah, version control puns. Yikes. Uh, got it. Now, now is the time when you would normally make your changes. Just to make it easy, we'll go ahead and make some changes for you. Got it. There are now changes on your branch. Give the commit a nice short summary and a more detailed description so that future you knows what this commit entails. Then click the commit to button to commit to make the commit. So I'll click on it. Tutorial. This is my tutorial repo. Okay. Commit to Wowie Zowie. All right. Whoa, did you notice how the compare graph changed? 
When you committed, yeah, the compare graph updated. Got it. We can now see that your branch is one commit ahead of master. Yeah, look at that, it's way ahead of it. You could also click on it to look at the particular commit. All right. Wow, look at that. Got it. Awesome. We're almost done. Let's finish up by moving your changes from your branch into master. Got it. To do that, we'll create a quick pull, pull request. Pull request, uh, publicize your changes and give you or anyone you're working with a chance to review them. Okay. Oh yeah, I never showed this. This is a button that conditionally renders. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Uh, click the pull request button up here to create a new pull request, enter a lovely title and description, and then submit. Okay, I don't think I've ever done this. You got it. Uh, send pull request. Your local things will be synced with GitHub. I don't think this will work because I don't think I'm logged in. Pull request created, kinda. Since this was just a tutorial, a pull request wasn't really created, but that's how you do it. Okay, that's cool. I was wondering if it would take me to the GitHub website and I'd be one of like 4,000 people doing that. Well done. Those are the basic steps of GitHub Flow. Got it. Feel free to play around in this repo. Changes are kept in the app and aren't shared on github.com. If you want to walk through it again, go to the gear menu and select tutorial. Okay, got it. All right, so that's the tutorial. Now we see it. Um, I'm gonna go and, re uh, how do I, can I just delete the whole thing? Um, I can delete this uh, branch. Yeah. Um, if I go back to Karm Darbo and then switch over to Scratch. Um, oh, it doesn't show. Um, if So this should have a pull request already up uh, on github.com. And sometimes there's the create pull request button and sometimes there's the number for the pull request and you can click on it and it'll open up the pull request in the browser. Uh, but I'm not logged in, so maybe that's why it's not showing up. Uh, but that goes over here too. Uh, behind this, there is uh, options and about. So we'll go to options and look at all those. Accounts. You're not signed in to any accounts. Add a GitHub account for quick access to your repositories or add a GitHub Enterprise account to access repositories on your corporate network. Um, Add account, configure Git. This is my, this actually reads it in from the Git config file on the computer. Uh, there's appearance for light and dark mode. Uh, it does require restarting to see the dark mode. Let's see that happen. Not, not a huge fan of what the dark mode looks like. It looks good here, but as soon as I like click on a file, um, do, 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 main. Fairgrounds main, click on a file. Um, this, this isn't quite as easy to read. And also the, um, go back to one of these things that has changes. Yeah, the blue is just like way too bright. The blue and white in dark mode is kind of obnoxious. But anyways, I guess it's not that terrible, but yeah, this is a little jarring. This like super neon bright green on black. Um, very 90s matrix vibes. Okay, so light and dark mode, cool. Uh, no high contrast mode, unfortunately. Clone path, so this is the default folder for all your projects. So it defaults to the GitHub folder inside of my documents, um, but you can change that to whatever you want. There's a scan for repos button, which um, let's see what happens. Click on it, searching. I assume it's scanning that GitHub folder and looking for any repos on this machine that are not added into here. And it looks like I found uh, a few projects. I found four things that I have cloned down locally that are not added in. So sure, let's go ahead and add those. And they've been added to the sidebar. I just saw it update. That's neat. Um, default shell. So I can choose the Windows command prompt, CMD, which is what I usually work out of. 
Um, Git bash. So this is something interesting. Every time you install this program, it also installs um, Git bash, which is an actual like version of uh, a Sigwin or something, or Ming, I guess it says Ming. Um, so this is running a Linux POSIX terminal emulator, essentially. It's not actually running Linux. It's just like an emulator that has a bunch of Windows executables that uh, match uh, the, the Linux commands. So if I type in ls, it's actually going to run ls.exe, which talks to the Windows file system and gets the files, and it renders that out the same way it would on Linux. That's the idea. Um, this is pretty useless as far as I'm concerned uh, compared to the command prompt. It's 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 literally the same thing, but if you if you don't know the Windows commands and you know the the bash commands instead, then this is what it's for. Except for one thing, and that is SSH. SSH is built in, um, built in on here, and it's not built in on Windows. So like you have access to SSH, and this is how I set up my SSH keys. So I would install the GitHub Desktop app, then go through and set up SSH keys on my machine for the first time whenever I set up a new computer. Uh, using this git bash, and then I would close it, and I would literally never open it again because everything else I do is done through the Windows command prompt. Um, there's also PowerShell, the the blue version, woo, that's slightly better at network calls, uh, and then custom I can point to my own executable if I want. So that's what default shell is for. Um, when I right clicked on something and told it to um, open git bash here, it opens up command prompt instead of git bash. Uh, it does set git bash as the default because it ships with that. Um, but uh, yeah, you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, privacy, help us improve by sending anonymous usage data. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, I can add an account and log in to GitHub through here. Uh, I don't think this works anymore because this app is so old. I think that's, this functionality is broken. Um, Oh yeah, it is broken because GitHub changed their rules on logging into them uh, through applications like this. I can't just give it my username and password. I have to, it won't accept it. I need to feed it in a token, but this isn't passing it in the token the correct way. It's passing it as a plain text password. So it just thinks that I'm giving it the wrong password rather than the token. So that's very annoying. So this just broke, this doesn't work anymore. Um, so yeah, that part doesn't work, unfortunately. I think that's everything in, in the app. Um, the only thing I haven't shown is the checking for updates, uh, which is, if I go back into about oh, here, oh, uh, also the, uh, the, that thing that just popped up for a moment is because there is a, an SSL certificate or something that this thing ships with that is expired, so it can't make network calls correctly anymore. So that window pops up and uh, the Windows operating system is like, hey, do you trust this? <laughs> it looks like it expired. Again, very old app. Um, so yeah, uh, this thing would pop up to let me know I have uh, updates if there is one, um, this about screen and um, Every time I open the app, if it if it knew about updates the last time it was open, it would pop this up every single time and tell me about it. But um, apparently, um, the last time I installed it on this machine was after the certificate stopped working, so it can't check for updates anymore, which is actually kind of convenient because it's annoying for it to pop up and tell me there's an update every time when the update is a completely different program from this. It's the new Electron one. Okay, GitHub Desktop, uh, contact support, open debug log. There's an X here saying that it failed to check for updates. Um, I can go to the EULA, the end user license agreement, um, GitHub Desktop, GitHub for Mac, GitHub for Windows, uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's the EULA all the way down. Miscellanea, cool. Um, I've read this in its entirety hundreds of times. I do it before I go to bed every day. I do it when I wake up. Uh, it's really important. Everyone should read it. Licenses. And then you can go through and see all the different stuff they use. They use CEF on this project. And you can see its license and go on GitHub and blah, blah, blah. So they're showing showing their uh, the credits here. 
and then release notes uh, couldn't be loaded, go open them in the browser. I think that's every last thing I could do in this app, um, pretty much. Yeah, so that's that's the whole app. Now you've seen the whole thing. Uh, the end. <laughs>